Grace and Peace, Lou here for this week's devotional. I'll be reading from James 13, James 1, 13 to 15. But before I start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you humbly, Lord. Um, thanking you for another day, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I just uh, pray for the hearer of your word, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to hide me behind your cross as I try to explain uh, your written text. Lord, I just pray for the players, Lord, that um, Lord, that you just draw them to yourself and grant them repentance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, it's James 1, verses 13 to 15, which reads as thus. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it has has conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death this is the word of god now there's a difference between um god testing someone and god tempting god will test us but would never tempt us in the sense of luring us to sin in the wilderness jesus was tested by god and tempted by satan there's a difference between our temptations that come from within our own sinful inclinations and those coming from the outside verse 14 says we are tempted when we are lured and enticed by our own sinful desires those sinful thoughts will give birth to sin for example a married man um, could start watching porn and be thinking about other women which might cause uh, which might cause those thoughts to turn into adultery and adultery is not only him physically having sex with a, with a woman that's not his wife, but also thinking of a woman in a sexual nature. James, the writer of this book, describes the origin of temptation as a person's own desire. Sin will lead us to spiritual death. Spiritual death is basically, because of your sin, you have no communion with God. That means you have no relationship with God because God is so holy and just that he can't allow sin in his presence. Not to say that those who have put their trust and faith in Him, um, if they sin, it doesn't that not doesn't necessarily lead to spiritual death because they are now His. But for those who have not, sin will lead to spiritual death. So that would mean you wouldn't you wouldn't hear from God and stuff like that. So instead of being of blaming God for the enticement to sin, fallen humans need to look no further than our own deceptive hearts. Jeremiah 17 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick who can understand it I will leave you with this think carefully before you allow sin to pilot your plane we are warned by James that you will crash into hell following your passion is not a good is not good advice when that passion is the unchecked ten, um, tendency of one's fallen human nature with that let me close Heavenly Father, we just um, thank you for your word, Lord. We thankful uh, for your faithfulness, Lord, in and, and, uh, and keeping us, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that um, as we uh, go out throughout our week, Lord, or our weekend, Lord, that you just uh, continue to watch over us, Lord. We pray for uh, the upcoming uh, final week of UFL, Lord. We're thankful for, for Timmy, for Ghost for Jay and all of the refs, Lord, who have done a decent job in uh, running this league. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. All right, next game up, we're going to have GTM versus Monarchs. GTM is coming off of a tie to Rep City, and Monarchs is coming off of beating Don't Sleep by one point, 31-30. So um, these teams are coming off of, you know, Two good games last week. Ghost, what is your thought on GTM? Lou, what's your thoughts on Monarch? Starting with you, Ghost. This team, listen, this team, right when, you know, you think that their season was over early in the season, then they start, they hit that spark, especially on offense. Lou started getting hot. You saw a lot of guys step up, and their offense became one of the most dynamic on the in, in, in the league so far. And this team has been exciting. 
whether they have close games like they had with, with Rep City last week or they have games like, you know, uh, the, a couple of the games that they won. This team has been excited, but their defense is one thing that leaves me worried because they make mistakes. They start to fight each other. They start to argue, and I think that is what's really going to kill them because when they play together, they can compete and beat any team in the league. But sometimes they become their own worst enemy. And I think that's their Achilles heel more than anything. And that's one thing that gives me pause every time I watch this team play. Um, you know, the Monarchs, disarray. I, I think they're just a little dysfunctional right now because of their defense. Chuck doesn't really look comfortable with um, the offense because guys aren't running their routes. And like you said with the last game, it is week eight. And y'all haven't got it together yet. So I don't know what has to happen. Like we said last week, they're not they're not looking scary going into necessarily scary going into the playoffs. Because as long as you have, you know, you got a good chance with Chuck um, um quarterbacking. Your defense can't defend nobody, but I guess you're gonna have to outscore everybody and their mama in order to get um to be successful in the in the playoffs. Yeah, I think it's just been a kind of disappointing um seeing them the 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 position that they're in now. I think um GTM has been very impressive. I think um, Coach Captain of the Year got to be up there with, with, with Flo and Sticky. I think it's a package deal. I think they both has done a great job. Yeah. I think they should be in the running. I don't know how the league will do it. I don't know if they're going to separate them, have them going against each other. I don't know. But them two have been a great – they have done a great job together. Flo's the one who really deals with the officials and gets on that. But Sticky's the one that really deals with the players. So they both got a job that they both do very well. And this team has been, like Go said in the beginning, we thought they wasn't going to have anything. And they now they are one of the top teams in that division. Monarchs, listen, Chuckers played decent. He still doesn't look comfortable. I think you got to put a lot on his guy as who's helping. And um, Mel, who's up there for offensive player of the year. Yeah. Um, The problem with this team is they, they, they thought having Chuck was going to be a plug and play. Chuck can't do certain things that Ramsey can do. Yeah. But Ramsey can't do certain things that Chuck can do as far as breaking down defensive coverages. But he doesn't have the same offense he had on DG that can break it down with him. This Monarch's offense is still trying to freestyle because they're used to having a quarterback that freestyles. Yep. And then they bring in a guy who's used to being the final world in the team who goes into an organization when he has other voices that the players know they're the final voice of the team. You can't say it's not been an issue this year. You can't. A lot of wins they got, a lot of teams bailed them out. But they have not looked dominant, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Monarchs coming, they're going to have their first round pick in Chuck. They will not have Akon. GTM will have their first round pick in Slutty, but they will not have Tanner. And this is a father and son matchup. And I asked Lou before the game, what is it like playing against your pops? Is your pops over there? He says, Jay, I don't play against him because he's not playing defense. Yep. So it doesn't, it's not what like you guys mm -hmm. think because he's not playing defense. So I'm not going up against him. I'm going up against his defense, mm -hmm. but I'm not going up against him. If that's not the most professional an intelligent thing to say. It makes a lot of sense. He's yeah, right. without a doubt. That means he's not intimidated by his pops to go on the other sideline because he's not going up against him. And understand so what that what, about it? You're right. And what that means is that means that I'm not trying to outperform him. I'm trying to just play my game and get my team going. And when you're hyper focused on what your team needs, whereas what you need to do. That shows that you're not as self-centered to worry about what's going on with you. You're trying to benefit and help the team win, and that's one thing the quarterback is there to do. As I said, I forget before we start, Lou smoked Carver when he made his championship run versus IOD. Yeah. Chuck wasn't there. We know oh, that. Yeah. So we don't know yeah. what could happen. But Carver had the number one defense that year, and Lou smoked them. Let's not throw that out. He did it. So let's not take away with him not being able to live up to the level when it's time to play ball. We'll jump into the game.
First down, Lou on four rush, throws to JD, cutting in the middle for a decent game. If you look here, Arbley and Benny are not talking, and JD's left open. They're not talking because they're not a very good defense. Ooh. They don't communicate at all, don't and it's obvious. Numbers. Arbley has been gone for a few years, and now he's coming back, and you just can't run on the field and think you're going to be able to play. Especially and when you Benny put has not weight. been a great defender this year. Yeah. And, but but my thing is, one thing that they would remember, Lou, what we've been talking about before you go on, Jay, crossing routes. Crossing so routes. if you got guys crossing, then you're supposed to anticipate the switch. That's why you communicate. But when you don't, that's when you're going to get beat. And we're definitely going to talk more about that later on, on in the game. Second half, they're getting a first. Lou with blocking from Chief. Rose left. Those are slutty cutting to the sideline. Nice game getting to the 20-yard line. If you look here... Leak has safety playing too far back. You see how deep Leak is playing? Leak is playing like he's about to go home. You know no, I think he, I think he was going to get some food from Flo. You know That's when it. you're trying to sneak out? Oh, you know you know the Homer Simpson thing when he fades into the thing? That's what it looked like Leak was doing. They had big acquisition this season. Fourth and goal at the eight-yard line. Lou with blocker from G. Rose left, finds and open in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. One day gets the extra point. 7 0 GTM takes the lead. If you look here, K Mac and Leak both guarding Juan Gay and Leak and wide open. So I guess they gave they gave Juan Gay that much props. I guess Juan Gay is a, is a possible Hall of Famer because you're double covering them and leaving Ant wide open. I don't know what's going on. I didn't get the memo, Ghost, but this is seven points. But my thing is because, guys, like I said, they're not communicating. So one guy would point them out and say, hey, you go with him. I got this guy. But because everybody's silent, they're reacting at the same time. Unfortunately, they're both reacting to the same guy. Now, I personally would react towards Ant more than Juan Day. Nothing against him, but they make the wrong choice. Both of them at the same time, and Ant is just sitting there wide open. That's one of the easiest throws in the world for any quarterback to do. And you leave Lou with an easy target, that doesn't make any sense. And that is why Monarchs have been struggling all season on defense. Chuck with blocking by Timmy. Throws a veil open on the sideline for a decent game and a first down. You look here, Nomar's left guard and West and never sees Vell behind. Nomar's not a good defender. Um, he, he just, I'm not even going to get at him because he doesn't play defense. So um, and I, wait, wait, for, but, wait for Chuck to go after him knowing he's not a defender. Chuck with blocking by Timmy. Throws a West on the sideline getting to the nine yard line. I got to give it to Timmy. Timmy's one of the best blockers in the game. He uses all hands. He meets the guy. He does not let the guy get inside leverage, and he meets the guy at the line. Great blocking and getting him time. I'm saying that because Simi's coming back off an injury, I believe he missed two games, and this team needs him to be healthy, and yeah. he shows it right away. Second and goal. Chuck with blocker by Timmy. Throws a Mel cutting in the front and the end zone. That's going to be dropped. That's a shame because Mel's played like the offensive play of the year. That's a huge drop by him. Third and goal. Chuck with blocker from Timmy. Throws a Mel in the back of the end zone. Mel's already sliding over and misses the ball incomplete. I don't know what's going on with him today. He misses this when Ant and Ruben are arguing. They just made a stop. They didn't score, but they're arguing. Fourth and goal, Chuck with blocker from Timmy. Throws to Benny in the back of the end zone. The pass is low, incomplete, turnover on downs. This one's on Chuck. You yeah. Gotta hit that throw. We've seen a lot of times Chuck throws once in a while, skips, and this one skipped on him, Lou. That's a big stop by the GTA. Yeah, it, I don't know. I, <laughs> And he was open and it wasn't and it wasn't a uh, uh he had no pressure. You know what I'm saying? Again, you know, maybe he didn't, he didn't pay that steroid um um subscription and it just stopped him from from following through. But yeah, that was a horrible throw. But then the thing was, he's like, I don't know if he maybe Benny didn't run the right route or somebody didn't run the right route because he threw up his hands. But you gotta understand but the, but then Lou, you gotta understand. Uh, so many plays that failed in the red zone. And now you have to make that one throw. And yep. you know, Chuck is not gonna always be consistent. We saw him make that bad throw last season in that final four game. Right. So again, when you struggle to make the score on uh, early on in the drive, it's forced on you and sometimes you make that mistake. Mm -hmm. That second down play, not to say that that was what um, saves Chuck, but at the end of the day, the whole offense gets fought because this should have been an easy touchdown there. Second down, Lua blocker from G. Dosey to Ant open in the gap for a nice game and a first down. If you look here, Bell and Benny is guarding Bo and left Ant open. This team is double covering everyone. I, I guess they know that Lou's coming in 
with the the number three offense in the league because they're double guard, they double covering the guys, but they're double covering and leaving other people open. He's going at them. I don't know what's going on, but it's not looking great. Lou then throws a JD open on the side again to the three yard line. If you look here, Benny and K Mac not talking. Maybe this this defense is not it it is it, doing a silent treatment with each other. No. Um, K Mac. K Mac looked like he was gonna rush. That's why he left JD. Like I had, like he took like a half a step. That gave him the separation. They're missing their defensive captain and Mike. They don't know who to blitz. They don't know when to blitz. They don't know how to blitz. And these guys are not communicating. Losing their defensive captain has been huge this season. Yeah. And they're, they have not recovered since he got hurt. Second and goal. Lou finds Ant in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. JD gets the two-point conversion, 15-nothing GTM. If you look here, Leak leads him the guard, nobody, and he's watching the quarterback. See, I love that. Leak leads his guy to guard no one. Once again, we've seen Sam Wheat from Coast making an appearance. Why are you leaving somebody who's there for somebody who's not? Listen, if I'm the Monarchs, I hope I have my receipt for Leak. Because he's been one of the worst off-season signings in the game. You leave prime time and sign with a championship running team to play worse. Makes no sense. I hope they got their receipt, Coast and Lou, because I'm, I want my money back. Hold I'm on, so hold sorry. On. Listen. Oh, I'm, I'm, go ahead, go ahead. Le go ahead Leak, Lou. Leak was guarding the air, Jay. Stop it. Sam Wheat. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm sorry to say I don't know any um teams that I mean, I don't know any stores, department stores that do any returns <laughs> after 30 days. So I think that time is gone. There's no exchanges in this league at this time. So they're stuck with them, unfortunately for them. But I, you, I don't know what's going on with this team. And the thing about it is, you see Lou, he's not going to slow down because your defense nope. is struggling. He's going to take advantage. And, and that's exactly what he's doing. And it's like, it's easy pickings for him. This is the second touchdown in a row that he was able to get. And to the same guy in the red zone with Ant, he's been a guy that he's been finding in the red zone, and they haven't been able to stop it, so why not keep going? At the end of the first down, Chuck on second down with blocker from Timmy, throws him out, open in the gap, who runs for a nice game, get him to the four-yard line. If you look here, Ruben watches the quarterback and losing him, and, 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 and Ruben is arguing again. First of all, I don't know why Ruben is watching the quarterback, but Ruben's not a defender. No. He's not. So my issue with Ant is you cannot lead your team by arguing with them. You're the leader. And once you do that, they're not going to respect you. So even if you're right, you got to know when to put your arm around your players. And Ant does not know how to do that. And right now, he's being vilified on his own defense. Third and goal, Chuck finds Vell open in the gap. For the touchdown, Benny gets the extra point, 15-7. Listen, we're not we're gonna talk about the fact that Mel made this possible with his route. He may not have caught the touchdown, but they need Mel to make big plays. He's one of the top offensive guys in the league. And for Chuck to go back to him after he had a few drops on the last drive is huge. And Vell has been the number two guy. Mel has been the number one, Vell has been the number two. And these guys are making plays, and Chuck is able to get back into this game loop with this big touchdown. Yeah, going back to Mel was big. Now, here's the thing, Jay. This defense isn't that much better than the Monarchs because I think a person in the wheelchair, Ironside, could have rolled off the line, spun his wheelchair, and caught that ball. Because, again, they're leaving, they're leaving dudes open. I don't. I guess they don't watch games. Like you said, Bell's their number two dude. How do you leave him alone? Well, listen, before you go, Ghost, they're, they're coming in with the number three defense in the league, but they're giving up 18 points a game. So they're giving up close to three touchdowns a game. And right. defensive has gone up this year. Yeah. Defenses are giving up more points this year. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying, and that's an issue. Go ahead, go. But understand, you see the whole thing about Ruben um, being a, um, on defense, and y'all said that, um, you know, he's not a defender. Who belongs there? Who's missing in this game? Who haven't we heard from? That the defender who they drafted onto this team. Santana's oh, not Tana, there. Tana, That's yeah. who belongs there. So Ruben taking, you know, to filling up that, that spot. 
Of course, he's going to make mistakes every now and then. He did not lose him on that play. But understand, I don't. everybody's not going to have eyes behind their back. When guys are not communicating, you're going to get isolated. So you can't only put it on one person. This whole team has to talk. They have to communicate. So when you lose one guy, sometimes the next guy behind you may see him. Point him out. Guys got to communicate and because they're not. That's why guys are getting isolated and exposed. And Chuck is not going to not take that shot if you leave him open. So this both sides on defense has to communicate better because these teams are going to keep taking advantage of them in the end. Second down after a short pass, new on four rush is still sacked by Aaron. Aaron is a good it's a good defensive end, basically ball giver. He's a better defender than he is a blocker. I like because he's aggressive and he's like the energizer buddy. He will keep coming after you. Remember the movie? And you, I, I like go forward and say you go back to the, the, the movie sequence. But you remember when um when 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 um Apollo Creed asked his manager, what are you worried about? And he said, I seen you beat this man like I never seen a man beat. Mm -hmm. And the man kept coming after you. That's Aaron. You can knock this guy down. You can do he's still going to pursue the quarterback. And he's able to get a sack right there. Great play by him there. Third down. <laughs> Third down, Lou Rose left. We're blocked it from G. Throws an Ant open in the gap. Ant cuts in, makes the catch for a first nice game and the first half at the 30-yard line. Ice's feet as ice as Ant cuts inside. Ice is crawling, talking to the defense during the timeout. Ice is still a mentally great defender, but his body's not what it used to be. He does not have that quick step anymore and when you like that you have to be, be able to telegraph where the guy's going to go before he does it and i think ant attacked this ball more than yeah. ice expected him to yeah and that's because Ant is faster than ice so but, i ice thing is that guys are not in position to help i yeah. think ice was chasing him to a spot yeah. for somebody to jump the route but there was no one there to jump the route so I think that's why he got the yeah. team together and he talks about it here. But and is a playmaker. And them having G to block and give Lou time. Lou could be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the league when he has time. He's not a runner. So once you give him time and you give G him, them, them G, this is a lot of a recipe for success. Second down, Lou throws a ball in a gap, getting to the four-yard line. Third and goal, Lou on four brush, throws the end open in the middle for the touchdown. Bo gets a two-point conversion, 23-7. They take a two-score lead. If you look here, Lee caught trailing in and gets beat. Just listen. You got to listen, Ghost. I understand what you're saying. After 30 days, you can't take it back. But all they have to say was this piece came in defect. Let me log. My, Let me log. Huh? Let me log. Yeah. <laughs> you, this leak was supposed to be a huge signing to upgrade this defense. And he does anything but that. He has not shown his worth. I don't care what organization you're coming from. I don't care what team you're coming from. I don't care what you did. Let me explain something to you. A lot of these guys get away in EHS because it's pouring out. So the field helps you play defense. When you're on an island and you're playing a long field, we get to see the real defender you are. And Leak is proven to the league. He's pretty bad. Pretty, got, pretty bad. He got pretty, pretty like bad. He got beat like he stole something. Cause you know, Listen, it was yeah. he got left, he he got left so far behind that it looked like Ice was the one who was guarding that. Yeah. Yep. And he wasn't. He had a he was chasing somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I'ma tell you this, right now, Tiki will probably watch this breakdown and smile. Because yep. he wanted him to play on his team on primetime. And he chose to be on the monarch. So listen, right now, this is one problem that primetime and Tiki does not have to worry about. Well, Lee could get away with it on the primetime defense because they were pretty bad. Ooh. <laughs> so now when you're on this, and they can listen. One thing I can say about Tiki, I may have gotten on Tiki, but now I see what's going on. Mm. A lot of his players are not great defenders. Mm. But he tries to run schemes to protect them. Well, Monarchs don't run that type of scheme. You play your guy, you play your zone. And Lee is showing to be more, listen, I hope they didn't give him a big contract. Because right now, he's not showing his words. And I know they're going to say, hey, Steven, I'm showing you film. This is film. Week in, week out. Hmm. Anyway, Jay, can, can 23 you to touch, 7. 
can you touch my people and say horrible defender? <laughs> Dude is horrible. Chuck That's right, Leak. You're horrible. Chuck gets the ball back with blocking from Timmy and sacked by RJ. But if you look here, GTM sends two. That is a weakness. Now, this is the problem. If they're going to send two, one of these guys got to cut their route. Tim can't block two people. He can try. But Chuck is waiting for these guys to cut their route, and it doesn't seem like they get the memo. After getting the first down, Chuck on second down, four rush, shakes RJ and runs for a decent game. Lou, these are the things that I say that Chuck always catches them on. You sack Chuck there, you're in a huge position. I don't yeah. know how RJ gets shook. I don't know why he has to go one angle. Chuck is not a big time runner. Right. So you don't have to run full speed in one angle. You're taking yourself out of the play based right. on the angle you're running in, and they give Chuck more time to turn a loss into a game. Third down at the 30-yard line, Chuck with Blockham, Timmy Rose left, throws a West cut in the back of the end zone for the touchdown, 23-13. They get back in the game by 10. If you look here, Ant is cut, caught watching the quarterback. I've seen Ant yell at any, everybody so far. He needs to yell at himself. He needs to pull us up to the sideline and yell at himself. So I would take a mirror on my phone and yell at myself. You got to have the same energy. What they said, let's see his face when he ace. You just got beat. You're yelling at Ruben. Now you got beat. So this is why you cannot get on your troops. Because the minute you get caught, now you lose credibility on that team. Now, what happened on this? Timmy gave him time. The key of this, they sent one. You just sacked Chuck early in the drive by sending two. You're not going to beat Tim one-on-one. -on -one. He's one of the best blockers in the league. But they send two and they got a sack. They send one here. Why? I got to put this on coaching. Why? You know this is a big third down. You send two. Especially you just saw RJ get shook by Chuck. You send two and now you make Timmy have to decide. They don't do that. And Chuck, this is why they call him the GOAT, makes a great throw to one of the only guys that was open. West, because Ant got caught watching Chuck. 23-13, guys. Well, um, you know, look, uh, for, for the Monarchs to be successful in the second half, they got to do something with their defense, which I think is almost impossible. It's almost like us getting rain for that, for that dust. But, um, it, it's, it's, look, they at least they're coming, what, 23, 13, they were, they were down, what, 23, seven. So you, you yeah. looking, it's looking a little promising. You got to score a couple of times. I think on that last touchdown, the dust may have helped. Um, with that touchdown as well, because I don't know how Ghost could see um, uh, from um, shooting because of because of the dust. But you know, let's see what happens in the second half. Talking about JTM, they their offense is looking good. They they they're clicking, but I think that that's kind of a problem in the end because who's the one scoring all the touchdowns? And yeah. who's the one that's struggling to get to take criticism but giving it to everybody else? And so at the end of the day, he's becoming a problem. But it's hard to tell him that because he's the one he feels doing all the work. Well, he is offensively. So at the end of the day, what can you tell him? He's the one that's finishing the deal. Now, granted, he got to understand that it's not I and team. They didn't drive all down the field by with Ant himself. Everybody else was involved in the offense. So you can't look at yourself as you are the main guy. But understand, also... You're criticizing everybody else, but you make a bad play and somebody criticizes you and it's a problem, that's not good. You know, sometimes you take it on the shin like, yo, all right, my bad. All right, let's move on. We got to do better. You were arguing with Ruben on a play when y'all made the stop. And the thing about it is when I looked at the play, Ruben did nothing wrong because he locked up on the guy. So at the end of the day, like these, these arguments are going to be worse Come playoffs, because that's when the, the 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 everything is elevated to a higher level, and every single thing that happens is going to be scrutinized for your team. So y'all gotta get together. Y'all gotta get together. Y'all been working too well together to fall apart now, and y'all have the lead. Y'all, I would think y'all losing or not, but you're becoming your own worst enemy. Like I said earlier. Well, if you look at halftime really quick. Ant and Lou are close to, you know, getting into it on the sideline. 
And um, they had they, they did some things that I'm was real disappointed on. I'm not really gonna get into it. Um, but Ant is one of GTM's best players, and that's the problem. Because the more he's doing to help the team, the more he's doing to hurt the team. Um, I always thought when Ant when I first saw Ant playing that he had similarities to a Swiss with the ability to be a leader on the team because the kid knows the game. I could not have been more wrong the way he looks now. He is chasing his guys away, and once they lose the trust, it's hard to get it back. He's arguing with the quarterback. He's arguing with the players. He argued with Slutty one week. He argued with Tanner one week. Yeah. You got to realize that you're becoming a problem. And sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it and when you say it. Are you really going to kick your guy when he's down? If I just made a mistake, that's like you telling me that we working at a job, Lou, and you're my boss, and I'm struggling in the, in, in the last few quarters to, to sell whatever. Are you going to come to me and say, yo, you get it together, you're fired? How motivated I'm going to be to do better? Well, like, the firing might motivate you. No, it's not. <laughs> you just made it worse. Because now I'm not confident now. Out. Yeah. Why don't yeah, you come yeah. and put your arm around me and see what's going on? Well, Maybe yeah, somebody true. passed away. Maybe I'm going through mental issues. It has to be a better leader because not only is he playing on his brand, He's playing with guys as, as veterans and played this game, and they're not going to trust him. Well, here's the thing, Jay. You know, you talked about the coaching. Where the coaches at? Where the coaches coming down their players? That's why when you said that they're up for, 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 for co you know, coaching, dude, that's not good. That's not good when you got your – the um and arguing with all these dudes. And is a young kid who always had a, a – a, a, you know, he's very vocal. You know what I'm saying? When he gets upset or whatever, and, whatever, except when he was on Carver, because they don't, they don't, you know what I'm saying? It's a different, it's a different atmosphere. When he's on his own, it's a different story. The most difficult thing before we jump in the second half is because this assistant coach is his dad. Doesn't and we matter. See how, how about the other no, one? How about no, the other coach? But no, what I'm saying is uh -huh. Sticky has to sit, you might have to sit at them. Yeah, that, that's at the end tough. of the day, yeah, that's people tough. are looking at it and this guy is hurting our yeah. team. And yeah. he's still out there. Yeah, There's no yeah. difference in what Dion had to do with his own son. Yeah, you, you have to talk to him. him. Yeah, you got to check him. him. Gotta because check the rest him. of the team is watching. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just, we'll jump into the second right. half. On the return, Bell runs on the sideline, untouched, runs all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Then he gets a two-point conversion, 23-21. They jump right back in the game. Isn't it ironic that after having all these arguments on the sideline, the first thing that happens in the second half is a kick and turn? Mm -hmm. Why? Guys are frustrated, guys are disgusted, and they just let they just let my marks back in the game by giving up touchdowns and now they give up this kick return goal. And this reminds me of the last game that the I mean the, the game that they played against PME, where PME was ahead two scores, and what happened? One easy downfield pass, and they were right back in it. It's like these teams always give Von the opportunity to get life back in the second half. Every time. Why do that? You're supposed to get the knockout punch, like knock them out. But when you have them flailing, but you have the opportunity for them to recover, they're going to hit you a couple times. And that's exactly what happened. And remember how you mentioned about Bell also being an issue on his team. Well, the last couple games, he's been split yeah. and he's yep. playing. And right here is an example of that he takes off, taking, taking advantage of their mistake of not paying attention right along the sideline nobody touched him they barely needed any blocks on this play this was so simple for him that it's just amazing that they allowed it to happen that was just the easiest six points of the game so far if you look here on the next drive and is being taken off for the offense and is coming out of the game with three touchdowns i think it's a move you had to make but it's a difficult move because this kid has three touchdowns in the first yeah. half. But that you, decision was done by the quarterback. Right. For obvious reason. Yeah. You can't get into it with the quarterback and then still think you're going to be on my offense. I would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. Because then it's like selling your soul. Not literally, Lou, but it's like mm -hmm. saying, I would allow anything to happen just for a win. 
-hmm. And sometimes you have to lose a battle to win a war and let Ant know this is my offense. You're not going to talk to me the way you are and still expect to be out there. So I got to give Lou credit, um, props for that move. Lou then driving downfield with three passes for nice game and getting the first down. For him to take out Ant and still move the ball down, it's a great look by him because he's sure he's not dependent on one guy. Lou with two short passes on second and third down, getting to the three-yard line. Fourth and goal, Lou with blocker from G, finds Bolt in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Slutty gets the extra point. 30 to 21, they take a lead. If you look here, Ice is standing guarding no one, and they end up calling a touchdown. Who are we going to yell out about that, Lou? Um, Leak. Leak also. Leak, Leak left Bo to look at Lou. But I'm actually, but my thing is, listen, I'm blaming the whole defense. I'm sorry. Because my thing is, regardless of what, answer my question, Lou. Who is Ice guarding? Yeah, he was at the corner. He was yes. at the corner, yeah. But I'm my thing to... is, understand, but listen, understand. In the red zone, why are you he playing? He wasn't guarding nobody. But that's my right? thing. Why are y'all playing hybrid defense? Yeah, How are right. some guys locking up and some guys playing zone? That makes no sense. They so no somebody's going to get open. There's no way that you're going to be successful playing a hybrid defense like that. But you it's... know what? No, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go Leak, ahead. Was, Leak was on both. Yes. He was on bowl and then let him go. But I get what you're saying about Ice. Ice was at the corner looking at the I, Ice is running the defense. He's the leader of the defense. But it's hard to sit down and figure out what's going on from the corner position. We've seen a lot of defensive captains that play the safety or the middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. When you're at the corner, you're more isolated on your own. So you can't really see what's going on on the whole field. And you're not supposed you're to the leave the corner. Yes. Correct. But right. so that's why I said it's just hard to lead the defense from that position and know what's going on. But you have a coach. Well, Pam's not here this game. Yeah, he's not here this game. But, not, but yeah. you have Chuck, you have Mike, you have Kaz. You have other guys there that can try to fix what's going on. But it's hard for Mike to lead the defense from the sideline. Yeah. The guys are not going to respect you the same way from the sideline that they did on the field. Because you can't help them. And that's well, another touchdown they give up there. I just think that again, when you see the when you see the play again, Jay, you'll see that was on Leak. Again, right. he let him go to guard no one. That's the problem. That's the second touchdown he's given to guard no one. To guard right. the air. That makes no get him the heck out of here. But that's communicating on the whole team then. Well, Sam no, Wheat. I'm saying if I'm if I'm on you, I'm gonna leave you for what? No one called yeah. me off of him. Then we because you know why you're busy watching the quarterback. Yeah. You're busy watching. So my thing is, but that's why you communicate, guys. That's behind you can tell you, yo, slide over, shift. There's somebody next to you. Go to the left side. This guy's right on your other side. But since nobody's talking, like I said earlier, including Ice, right? How are you gonna solve these problems? They're not, and well, that's you know, what's happening. You know what they should have yelled. Stop looking at the quarterback and stay on Bo. That's what they should have yelled. <laughs> All right, we got 30 to 21 GTM. See, Jay, Stephen Jay's a bad um, influence on me. <laughs> Chuck gets the boy, throws a West. That's going to be dropped. Second down to the 48-yard line. Chuck scrambles with blocker from Timmy. Throws a bell, cut near the sideline for a nice game and a first down. At the 15-yard line, good blocker by Timmy. Chuck has to be happy to have Tim back. He's one of the best blockers in the league. And the more time you give any quarterback, the more they're going to destroy you. Second yeah. down, Chuck throws a Benny in the gap, getting to the two-yard line. Third and goal, Chuck finds West in the middle of the end zone. What a touchdown. 30 to 27, Lou. I mean, goals, they jump right back into the game, and they're chasing three. And it's funny because this place, the, the, the drive kind of started with West dropping a pass, a routine pass, and then you go back to West to finish the deal with the touchdown. So one thing about Chuck is he's not going to go away from a capable receiver, especially if they're open. Some some quarterbacks may do that, but sometimes you can't. And Chuck is a professional enough that you know that if they're on the field, they're a receiver that's going to finish the job eventually. So you keep going to him. But Chuck is picking his defense apart. And I think yeah. the main thing about it is the extra time by Timmy is making so much of a difference. Because this GTM team is struggling to put pressure on Chuck, that's why he's staying comfortable in the pocket and is able to go blow for blow with this GTM offense. And and one one last thing. Um, on that play, Vell, this is how open their offense was. 
Vel was open and and um um old man West was behind him. Mm-hmm. Vel fell fell in front of him and there was no defender near him. 30 to 27. We got a high scoring game. Mm-hmm. Third down, Lou on four rush is sacked by Aaron Monarch sent to. Aaron is a capable pass rusher. I like him in that position. They send two to stop giving Lou so much time because G's been giving Lou all day and they get the sack. Third down, Lou on four rush throws a slutty in the middle, low, almost picked up by Benny. If you look here, no one is short. Benny finally makes a play defensively, but this was more Lou with a not great throw. Lou on four rush, throws deep to Slady on the sideline, incomplete turnover on downs. Lou misses his throw. This is a great route by Slutty, which is why they brought, they brought Slutty in to do this. Looks like he got him in a chair route, and he was open, and Lou misses his throw. Nine out of, nine, nine out of 10 times Lou hits this throw, he missed it here, goes, and that was huge. They're only up three, and this is huge that he missed this throw. And understand this, this was a drive where Monarch started to get their act together and start putting pressure on the quarterback and stay with their receivers. The thing about GTM that they missed this opportunity is a lot of guys weren't really short for Lou to get some easier targets. And because of that, Lou is forced to throw downfield passes. And that's something that's a little bit easier, I guess, for the Monarchs to lock up on. And that one throw by Lou, which was on fourth down, by the way, was, was missed. This could have been a huge drive by Lou if he made that throw. But understand, because the first three downs, he wasn't able to get any easier targets. That's forced to put it all on one throw. And if you miss it, that's a turnover. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's unfortunate, but that's opportunity missed. That's not a way to, um, that's not where you get the turnovers on this point of the game. Second down after a short pass, Chuck on four rush runs the whole cover play. With Chuck running by himself all the way to the six yard line. Lou, guys get caught with this all the time. They know exactly when to do it and they catch him here on this and they yeah. save it for the right time and they get away with a nice run here. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, for a 75 year old man, he still got some legs. Yeah. But my thing is the play worked so well yeah, that serious. there was nobody there to stop him. So he was able to run 35 yards before anybody was able to even figure out that he's running which is ridiculous. That just shows how crazy they got caught on this play. And it shows that they was in a full man. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's why he had the whole side and he knew they was in a man. Because if this is a zone, this does not work. Fourth and goal with 43 seconds left. Chuck finds Lee cutting in the front of the end zone for the touchdown. Lee gets the extra point. 34-30, they take the lead right back. Great drive and they finally took the lead this game. It's funny that we've been talking about Leak bad all game, but he gets one of the biggest touchdowns of the game on offense. So maybe we can all say, hey, just stay on offense. Maybe you're more effective there because you haven't been having a good game. Listen, I'm not going to say that he can't play defense. He can't play defense. He can't. I'm not going to say that. A bad game is a bad game. He can't. No, 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 no. (laughs) He's a bad defender, bro. Listen, all right. Jay, Jay. You've Steven seen him in part two over here. He's not a good defender. He's not a good defender, bro. Listen, at the end of the day, regardless of what, they figure out how to get to into the end zone on the key part of the, of the game. He's making and, plays on offense, yeah. And yeah. the thing about this, but my thing is, that Carver play is kind of what did it. The 35 yeah. yards that he was able to run kind of made it that much easier with the time running out. That was an effective drive. So um, with time left left on the, on the clock, they were able to score and get the lead right back. Love you, Leek. Second out with 30 at the 35. Lou throws deep to Ruben, who has a step on ice. In the gap, caught big play for first down. Listen, Ruben has been catching the ball on the offensive side. We've seen him do it a few weeks ago on the back end for a touchdown. Ruben has played well. That's why when you hear Ant yelling at him, it's like this guy has been quiet this season. This guy's been balling out and he's been showing the ability to play offense. And Lou has trust in him and he finds him here, Lou. Lou, our Lou, from that Lou, great play by them. There. Let me let me tell you something, Ruben. We know Ruben. Ruben's a good receiver. He's he's a guy that gets. He's not, he is not the fastest, but that shows you that ice hasn't been the same since the injury a few years ago. Because there's right. no way on God's green earth that a Puerto Rican is going to beat a black dude on the on the route. Oh come on, <laughs> is this a Madison Square Garden rally? Like what's going on? Here? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Bro. <laughs> 
Let's first be thing, realistic. First and go, <laughs> Lou finds Ruben in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. 36-34, they take the lead right back. If you look here, Ice is watching the quarterback as Ruben runs behind him. Ice has not had a good game. This is not a good play by Ice. Lou attacked him. After that yeah. last play, he came back and attacked him again, and he's able to get a touchdown. There. But I just got to say right quick, if you are the corner, you got to see where the receivers are lined up. He never saw um, Ruben at all on this play. He had no idea he existed until after the ball was thrown to him. That is not the way a cornerback plays. First of all, before the hike, you got to know that the receivers lined up here. If you're going to line up on the, on the corner, you have to on an angle. So you can have a view of the quarterback, and in the corner of your eye, you know where the receivers are lined up. Guys be so focused on the quarterback that they don't see the, the receivers lined up. If you look, Ruben comes in, and then he runs to the outside. Ice has no idea he's there. So there was no way he was stopping this play. Lulu the whole time, and he was able to easily get that ball to Ruben for that touchdown there. I don't know, Ghost, because he... I, I... You have you have a better view because you was behind the camera, but it looks like he could see him. But why? Like if he did, let's say if he did see him, let's say if, if he did, why would you play with your with, with your? That's the second time that he had his back to the sideline. Yeah, but my thing is, listen, there's no plausible reason for any right. defender to allow a receiver to run to the corner, knowing that you're the last line of defense. Yeah. So that's why I get. And you're the supposed to play the corner. Yes, so that's why I got the impression that he didn't see him at all. Right there, dog. Few seconds left <laughs> during the first down. During a free play, Chuck throws it up incomplete. Ball was flagged for offside. That's going to give him five yards. They're going to pass the first another five, ten yard penalty. Ball went ballistic. Then he let it go. What do you think, Ghost? It was told that he lined up in the neutral zone. He was offside from the beginning of the play, and I don't think he really saw his foot over the line. But Chuck saw it. And understand, uh, there's no a physical line that you can see that you're crossing. So you got to always line up and understand where you are according to the cone. And I think that um, Bo anticipating rushing in on the blitz, he lined up where he didn't need to. And he did. I think he was passing neutral zone. If you look where his feet is planted here and look at where the cone is, he's just passing. I think that that's plausible that he lined up in the neutral zone. And I think that's why he, that merited the flag. The, the ref is right there, um, you know, the flag straight quick. across. So right as the, the hike was, was um, made, the flag came out. That shows that he was already lined up there. And I think you throw the flag, Lou. On, now, if it's a hike and it's a step over, that's different. But when you're already lined right. up off sides, yeah, yeah. you got to throw that flag. And he threw it right away. lined up off sides. Yeah. Yeah. And the flag came out immediately. Came out right away, yeah. They thought, a lot of people on the sideline thought, that the referee forgot that they had a blitz or whatever. But if you look here, hopefully you can see it. He's lined up off sides already. So that is an infraction, and that's why the whistle was blown. Now, the play wasn't called dead because he never touched the offensive Yeah, player. it's not encroachment. Yeah. So he because he never touched, and anybody who's played Manning know you can line up there, and it's not the play still goes, but it's called off sides. If you touch the lineman. Yeah. Or if the lineman touched you, yeah, then it would be little encroachment. But that's not what happened. Ten yard penalty. That's a huge play. Last play for going. Um, last play. Now they get the blitz back because it was offside and they got the first down, which gives them a new four down. So a lot of people think, "Wait, they're supposed to lose a blitz?" No, because they just got a new four down. Yeah. Both blitzes on this one. Now this is my only question. Aaron is blocking. Tim has been blocking all day. Aaron and Tim blocks differently. Mm -hmm. Aaron attempt, attempts to let the defender get to him. Tim meets them at meets, the point right. of the attack. So if you look here, Bo gets inside. And it looks like he got the tag. Now, if you look from Ghost's ankle, he may have missed with the hand. Lou and Ghost, y'all can see it. But from the rest angle, when both throws their hands, one definitely hit. But because of the angle the officials in, you can't move because Bo was blitzing. Mm -hmm. It looked like the official thought he got the tag. You can see here he probably missed that hand. Tell me what y'all think of the play. 
Well, I'll tell you like this. That was a great blitz by Bo. Because the angle that he took, Aaron, like he got by him quick, and it looks like Aaron tried to like stop him with his arm. You know what I'm saying? Where he couldn't really get no leverage on him. And and like you said, the right arm looks like it tags him. The left to me didn't because uh Bo's arms are too short to box with God. Mm. Sorry for the bad um um uh move uh play reference. But yeah, uh uh like again, the ref's position, there's no way he can see it because um my son in law is a wide body, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that wide back. So, you know, yeah, it, it it those are again, like we've said all season. Some calls are tougher than others, and, you know, it's hopefully come playoffs. Again, we do have um, replays of challenge flags, so those are plays that, you know, that could be challenged. What do you think, Ghost? I think that it's close. Um, and understand, um, he made the effort, and the thing about it, the miscommunication between the quarterback and, the block, and, and, and Aaron is kind of what made it close. So at the end of the day, I think um, Bo did get a hand on him. And a lot of times when it's that close, you know, then it's a it's on pretty much a bang-bang when it gets that close, where they get one hand, probably the other one whiffed. That's probably that's what it looks like to me. Like he gets one hand, but the other one whiffed on the other side. But again, that's a close play. And that's because Aaron gave him the ability to push by him, mm -hmm. which is weird that a person as small as Bo is able to push by Aaron to even get that close. So at the end of the day, why put the, the game in the ref's hands by letting, letting the smallest guy on their team get by you or at least, you know, reach around you to try to make a play? That's, you know, a reason why you influence a play like that. So at the end of the day, yeah, it was close enough that it's up to the ref to see that play, and he made the call the way he did. I think it's a tough call. I think he may have missed with the hand. The officials won't see it, and I'm not going to make it seem like I was the official. And it looked like on my angle that he tagged him. It was so surprising that Bo got so close on the inside, and it seems like Chuck moved up into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a tough one for the, the, the rep for myself to see. It looked like a tag. Um, I was surprised that Aaron was the one blocking and not Tim when Tim has been blocking all day and been giving Chuck as much time as possible. Aaron, you know, knowing that Bo was going to blitz, especially when you just got a call right. in your favor, should have met Bo at the line right. with Chuck backing up, especially if Chuck is going to step up and throw the ball. I think Chuck stepped up because he's going to throw the ball. Right. Yeah. He's expecting Aaron to dominate at the line and give him space. And I think the miscommunication, unfortunately... We see Aaron struggle with this during the season a lot this season. That he a lot of smaller guys beat him with leverage on the inside when he should be dominating this guy. This yeah. is why I think Tim should have made this play. Tim should have been in, but it's a tough call. But I think he might have missed out. Well, you know what? I, I know the reason why they would have because remember, Tim has made um great catches on, yeah. on, on Hail Mary. So, they want so him that's downfield. the reason. That's the reason. Able to make a if play. anything, yes. if anything, you should have had um, Aaron and Cass blocking. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to give yeah. them more time. All right. At the end of the day, real quick, I think the Monarchs they lost this game, but I think they got to be concerned about their defense. Defense didn't look good all season. Chuck started out slow the first possession, but then he was able. The offense was able to start, including the kick return, five touchdowns. They scored five out of six possessions after being stopped the first one. Unfortunately. The defense gave up four touchdowns and then got gave a stop and then gave up another touchdown. This defense is not very good. Leak has not been what he, they expected him to do. Benny's not making the plays he did in the past. This team cannot really pressure the guy. They miss Mike leading their defense. They miss him. And they got to figure out, or oh, what's they going to have a short playoff run? On the other Ooh. side, GTM got to figure out what they're going to do with Ant. If Ant is, you cannot continue to bench Ant, he's one of your best players. But he has to know He's ruining this team's opportunity to win a championship. And when you got other guys following suit, the coaching needs to sit down and speak to them and find out what they're going to do because what they're doing now is not working as far as him leading them. We're going to have to see what happens. Playoff push is about to start. That's gonna We're going to wrap this game up with GTM beating Monarchs 36-33. We'll be right back.